everyone. GM, GM. So great to see this group of people. We are in such an early time of DAOs and just us well here as pioneers. I'm very excited to meet many of you and to see these rooms become bigger and even more diverse. So if an Ethereum address has no gender, then why does this matter? Why am I talking about diversity in DAOs? And I think we know that this room becomes more interesting when there's more diversity. We know the parties get better, but also teams perform better too. And so over the last few months, since the tools that make DAOs possible have emerged, we've been working on something called EVE, which is an onboarding platform for women and non-binary people to jump into the crypto universe specifically in investing and education around DeFi. So super excited to talk to you guys about what we've been learning, what that onboarding looks like, and hopefully help you all think about your own diversity plans for your DAOs. Next slide. So intro, done. Uh, we'll talk about the future of feminine finance. What does that mean? some lessons in onboarding in Web3 for women specifically, and then ideas for DAO diversity. We can jump to the next thing. Let's dive in. So EVE is an investment and education platform. We've helped hundreds of women so far get onboarded into crypto and DeFi. Super interesting to see how different that is by, by gender and by background. So we come at it with a very feminine lens, and um, it's all built with women in mind. So how it started was with a group of expert women in traditional finance, venture capital, and crypto. And we thought, you know, everyone's super levered, really busy, but they have this expertise that needs to be shared. And what could unite this group to share their knowledge, investment ideas, and deal flow? And when the power of a tokenized community emerged, we realized it's something that could bind us with shared values. So every one of the 20 core contributors and experts who guide our community are actively building something in the wealth space and the personal finance space. So it's been super interesting to see us all come together, to share research, to collaboratively design courses, and to benefit from the way we share community and then the way we share the burden of creating really high value content. So we can finally move away from you know, what is a 401k and actually into how to do yield farming and staking. So our mission is to guide a million women non-binary people into wealth building in Web3. And we really hope that we can become the vanguard of Web3. What does it look like to create new index funds, the first ESG index funds, um, and crypto structured products? So this is kind of what we look like. You can check out our website at evewealth.com. Tell your girlfriends, friends, partners. We'd love to have them. Um, and what you can see here is everything's token gated and unlocked in an exploration process. So we have different levels to go through learning about wealth building. So if you jump next, um, I think there's one more before this or two potentially. No? Okay, well, this is what we'll go with. But the EVE DeFi guide is the course that we've collaboratively built together. So we took sort of the best lessons from people in the space like Shifi and 256 and Women in Blockchain and put it into this course. And there's both a solo track and a community track. So if you want to learn about this with a cohort, you can literally find those first 10 friends who will help you press the button. Uh, so if you jump... Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. So we have editorial. We have a weekly editorial investment guide. So this is when we dive into research from our experts with multiple collaborator collaborators and contributors, people who are contributors to the research and investment opportunities earn EVE tokens. Everyone else has EVE NFTs, and that's how they unlock the different levels using Guild, uh, XYZ by Agora, and POAPS. And if we jump to the next slide... This is the levels I was talking about. So our PO apps unlock different levels of our Discord and the website. So the way we've structured it is that you can go on a journey and kind of unlock the things that are most relevant to you as you're going along the path. Everything from portfolio shares. So we have anonymous libraries that we're sharing amongst members and um, the DeFi Curious course. So we have the Crypto Challenge and the Crypto Alpha Chat. 
And if you keep going, you can unlock deal flow. So we try to get more women on Web3 cap tables as well, as among other things. So we teach due diligence and all that stuff. So we talked about the DeFi guy. We can jump. Please check it out. It's evedefi.com. And then, yeah, I think by the numbers, I, I wanted to just share this with the group because it was really staggering to me as we have dove into some of the research. There was this great study by CoinGecko recently, which was that only 9% of the survey respondents who are women had heard of DeFi, but 89% of the men had. And, you know, this is a big issue if we're really trying to create a new financial system, if it looks the same way it had before. So this is really key to our mantra. And there's been a really big surge of communities trying to solve this problem. Um, you know, there's Crypto Besties, G256, BFF. And I think that's really important because these niche communities are what's going to um, allow different perspectives and different uh, users get, get adoption. And then crypto users, uh, sub 15% are women. And then most social Twitter protocols, um, their followers are sub 13% as well. Yet women are actually going to inherit most of the 30 trillion in wealth that is being transferred by boomers right now. So it's a huge opportunity. We're super excited about it. Um, and if we jump to the next ones, I do want to share some things that you guys can take away because it's all about sharing in this uh, industry. And I think it's really important as we're all leaders of DAOs or trying to be, to try to take some of these lessons away. So there's an onboarding problem in general for non-crypto native users, as we know, uh, especially around wallets. We experimented a lot to try to figure out how do we get women who are in tech even, or professionals in venture capital um, to learn and adopt these products. And I think there's some really great efforts happening. Uh, Rainbow Wallet has been an incredible tool for us because it's super easy. The UX is great. MetaMask is still pretty tough for people to even understand how to change from different um, protocols. and. Uh, and we've just seen like the ability that you can save to the iCloud has been really, really effective. So Rainbow is one we often recommend and suggest. Uh, and we're also seeing a lot of new products emerging in Clutch Wallet, which is a wallet that's meant to be designed straight for women by a woman named Beck. Then on top of that, we start to do these new joiner calls. So we have a lot of demand for technical one-on-ones or technical sessions. So we now have these as part of our Discord. Every week on a Monday, you can jump in at noon and come and actually get somebody to help you in the community, press the button, and, and uh, download your wallet and learn all the steps that you need to join. Super important to have that first person, I think, all of us remember the person who got us into this crazy space. And the loyalty and trust that comes with that is really uh, bar none. So uh, first friends has also been a huge insight for us. So how do you not have somebody jump into a Discord that are thousands of channels and emojis and memes and words that they may not know? And so what we do is we have the first step in our levels with the PO apps are to um, jump into a circle. And a circle are 10 people that you're matched with who become your first friends in the Discord. So I think that's a really great thing to remember is like, how do you introduce people to those first, you know, one to 10 people who really care about your experience in that space? And then the last two are values led. We're seeing, especially with women non binary or underrepresented groups, a huge desire for climate based projects. Um, climate interest protocols, and then also the idea of what other ESG variables could be understood and applied within layer ones, layer twos, and all the projects beyond. So that's something we're now working on in something called at values index on Twitter with a collaboration with some amazing women. And then finally, role models. The last insight I think is super interesting about our demographic is that women in particular we're seeing are more likely to learn something and then be open to contributing or teaching from their expertise rather than investing and then learning from the, those mistakes or um, learning first and putting a lot of time in and then making the investment. It just never happens. So we're really trying to unlock this learn and earn, learn, earn role model flow uh, in our community next. So stay tuned. And then finally, I'll end off with, 
ideas for you for DAO diversity. So just some quick five ideas to think about that I've seen other um, DAOs do very well. Partnerships uh, with communities like E, Women in Blockchain, She256 or SheFi, uh, we're totally open and excited to share, learn, um, talk within each other's communities and channels, and also help with some of the design of onboarding. Then the next is women and non-binary support channels. I think Index Co-op did an incredible job with this. They launched something called Women in Index Co-op. It's a weekly session. It's run by role models and leaders, one hour, mostly a social place for women non-binary to jump in. Um, I think core team design is huge. We talked about this. It's something like for most DAOs and protocols, under 20% of their leadership is women. So having role models on the leadership team is what drives contribution and um, the network and virality. And then a preferred pronoun pulse, I think is super interesting. Uh, Index Co-op did this as well. We've done this, We've seen it a few other DAOs where they'll have a channel specifically to have people share, self-elect to share what their preferred pronoun is, um, or they'll incorporate it into their onboarding survey. And why that's interesting is that knowledge is power. And so if you collect that information even anonymously, it can be really helpful to make decisions going forward. And then finally, obviously, this is important to us too, is women on cap tables and whitelists, or I like what was mentioned in the last presentation, green lists. Um, this is really important. How do you find and source those communities of women, non-binary, kind of different diverse people to be part of your projects and part of the things that you're building? So um, always happy to chat. My DMs are open, and I would love to discuss what you're building and how to collaborate. So thank you all.